This video is intended to introduce Vanderbilt students to LT SPICE, which as an electrical engineer or as any type of engineer who's going to be involved in circuit design, you'll find this to be a very useful software tool, which enables you to simulate electronic circuits and see their actual behavior. So let's go through and before we begin here, let's first just look at some of the history of LT SPICE. LT SPICE is actually one of a whole lot of different circuit simulator programs in use today. Many different vendors and manufacturers and companies offer simulator software, but they're almost all pretty much in, uh, originating from the original SPICE open source program, simulation program with in integrated circuit emphasis created in UC Berkeley in 1973 by Lawrence Nagel. And this original program was written in Fortran. And this is something people don't really appreciate. Prior to 1973, there really wasn't any effective way to simulate the behavior of a circuit. But SPICE changed all that when people were trying to simulate electronic circuits. So SPICE became very quickly the de facto standard and became incredibly popular. So in 1989, SPICE 3 came along, also from UC Berkeley, and this one was written in C. And that code base for SPICE 3, which once again was released as uh, essentially open source, uh, this has been incorporated into many, many different commercial simulators, including LT SPICE. So LT SPICE, like so many others, is really based on SPICE 3, which is still maintained to this day. So when we look at LT SPICE simulations, we're going to be looking at three basic analysis types. LT SPICE can do more than this, but the three we're going to focus on in our school and our classwork is going to be DC analysis, AC analysis, and transient analysis. DC analysis does exactly what you would think. It solves for the DC voltages and currents in a circuit. So you can either so solve for one particular set of operating conditions, or you can perform what's called a DC sweep, where you can choose a voltage or current source, specify a starting and ending value and an increment, and then it will go through and sweep the DC conditions for the entire circuit and let you plot them, and the x-axis of your plot just becomes the swept DC value of that source. So this is a great way to see if your circuit is simply operating the way you think it should, if it is actually biasing up it's being, uh, it's being placed in the proper quiescent operating condition. Then we go to AC analysis. This is basically when you do an AC analysis, you're performing the equivalent of what we call small signal AC analysis in electronics one, where you first solve for the DC operating condition in a circuit. And then once you do that, the simulator generates a linear AC model using that DC quiescent operating point. So your x-axis of the output plot becomes the operating frequency. And if you specify a decade frequency sweep of that x-axis, it looks like if you look wind it with something that looks just like a Bode plot from circuits too. So this looks very, very familiar in terms of things you've already seen in your classes. And the output values in an AC analysis are going to shift with frequency because, of course, impedances of capacitors and inductors in the circuit will change. And the final analysis we're going to look at is called transient analysis. And this is probably the best equivalent to what you would actually see if you were measuring voltages and currents in a lab. If you look at an oscilloscope, you'll see voltages and currents plotted with respect to time. Well, you see that also in transient analysis. Transient analysis is very nice because it very accurately simulates all the behavior of the circuit, all of the large signal nonlinear behavior. You can say cutoff, clipping, distortion, voltage saturation, all of those phenomena are very obvious to you. And in order to use this, you have to, of course, specify some time dependent function like a pulse or a sine wave or an exponential or piecewise linear function for a voltage or current source. Now, transient analysis is very powerful. It's also much more computationally intensive than either a DC or an AC simulation. But once again, can tell you a lot of information about how the circuit works. So we're next going to look at LT SPICE and take a look at these different types of simulations and how to run them.
So let's begin by creating a schematic in LTSpice. And in this case, we're going to be using the Windows version of LTSpice. There is also a version for the Macintosh. However, the interface is very, very different. And for the sake of simplicity and uniformity, I'm just going to stick with the Windows. Um, I would recommend those of you who have Macs might want to consider installing a program like VirtualBox and then getting a Windows license and then just running the Windows version of LTSpice that way. But in this case, we'll begin and we'll first start by creating a new schematic. And I'm going to create a very simple circuit, a voltage source in series with a resistor and a diode. And then we're going to simulate that. So let's first go and say, new schematic from our file menu. Notice how the screen's turned gray. We're now in the schematic entry window. And we notice all these commands along the top. And the ones we're going to focus on here are these commands which are going to enable us in this part of the, of the menu bar to lay down some components. So you notice a resistor, a capacitor, an inductor, a diode, and then something just called component. And that's going to cover just about every other component that you don't see on the top of this bar. So let's first just begin by putting in our resistor. So I've got a resistor, a generic resistor, and I'm, I want to rotate it though. I don't want to keep it this way. So I'm going to go up here to this menu where you can rotate or mirror. And now I've rotated the resistor like so. Now LT Spice will let you keep putting down resistors and then just keep clicking if you want. But in this case, I don't want a second resistor. So I'm just going to get the escape key and that second resistor just disappears. Now I'm going to add a diode. Place that. And now I need a voltage source. And I don't see a voltage source icon anywhere in this bar. So let's click this little thing. It looks like a little AND gate that says component. And here you see a window that covers all of the other different types of components, literally thousands of different components you can put into your LT Spice simulation. And what I'm going to choose is the one called voltage. That's our voltage source. And so we have our voltage source, our resistor, and our diode. Now we need to run some wires and connect it together. So up here, you see this wire icon looks like a little pencil. We click on that. And now we can draw wires that connect together the terminals on each of our different elements. In this case, notice we got a little mistake here where we got a little extra wire we didn't intend to draw. It's easy to delete wires. Go up to the little scissors icon, the cut, and then go and trim away that piece of wire we don't want. And now, incidentally, while I'm here, I want to point something else out. My schematic kind of got moved down to the bottom while I was panning around on the screen. If I click this little zoom full extent that fills out the schematic and centers it in the screen again and then I can zoom back out this little zoom back and then one more time and now I've got plenty of room to work again so you can always get back and recenter your schematic using these tools here zoom in zoom out and then zoom full extent now I need to add one other important element I need to have the ground every LT spice schematic must have a ground in order for LT Spice to run. So I put in my ground and then once again I add a wire. And I can if I want to have multiple grounds. Uh, they are all connected to the same node. That all grounds are the same thing. So if I want to make my schematic look neater or nicer, I can have multiple grounds, and that will sometimes just make things look better. So I've got my schematic here, but I don't have any values for my components. So let's go ahead and let's add some values. Let's first go over to our voltage source V1. It's got a voltage source of V. That doesn't mean much. 
I'm going to right click and then I can put in DC values. Let's put in 5 volts. Now let's go to my resistor. Right click on the resistor and for my resistance value I will use 1E3. Now for my diode, this is just the generic LT Spice diode, but I want to use a specific manufacturer's diode. So I right click here and I say pick new diode. And now I can go through and we see there's a menu of literally hundreds of different commercial parts. And these are all LT Spice models that these manufacturers have provided. I'm going to pick the 1M4148. And now that is the diode I'm going to have. So I now have a fully functional schematic. Let's go and let's save that. And now that I've saved it, we're going to run some simulations. So let's first begin by doing a DC simulation just to check the operating point. Now in order to get some useful information out of my simulation, it, typically it's nice to label the nodes with names that you will know what they are. Right now these nodes are just given numbers by LT Spice, and you'd see that once you ran the simulation. But really it makes more sense to do a label net command. Call a node out. So I'm going to put a label on that. I'm going to call that node out. And then over here I'm going to put another one. In and I'll connect that to the node over here. So now I've labeled the input and the output nodes, which will make things easier for me when I go through and analyze the output. So once again, I'm going to save this. And now I'm going to run a DC operating point simulation. So let's go up to my Edit Simulation Command under the Simulate menu. Click that, and here are different simulation types. For now, let's look at the DC Operating Point Simulation. Notice this dot .op that appeared. That tells LT Spice we're going to run an Operating Point Simulation. And notice this little dot .op appears and that is visible in the schematic to let you know what simulation is about to run. Now all I have to do is simulate and I click on the little run command. It looks like the little person running. And here are the operating points. The input voltage is 5 volts. That's not a surprise. The output voltage is 0.653 volts for the diode. Once again that seems very reasonable. And we have the currents for the elements. And you will notice that some of the currents are negative because of the way that LT Spice specifies current. Quite typically, they'll insist that current flow from the positive to the negative terminal for any element, which means that you may get a negative current. And you have to think about it and think, is that current makes sense? Because quite often, there's nothing wrong with the current. It's, it's, just, it's a negative current. You just need to flip it around to a positive value when you write your answer down. So here's our operating point, and I should also point out you can do this as well. You can go and double click after you've run that, and you notice the voltage appears. So it actually shows the voltages themselves on those nodes, 5 volts down here on ground, 0 volts. So all your node voltages appear. All right, so this confirms your uh, DC operating conditions for your circuit. And I just want to emphasize that you should always go through and check your DC operating conditions. It is really kind of surprising at times how often people will go through and run a simulation. The simulation gives them the wrong answer, and they don't know what is going on, and they never go and actually check to see if the DC operating point makes sense, if the circuit is actually working the way they expect it to. So. We've run our DC operating simulation, or DC operating point. Now let's do a DC sweep. Let's take this same DC voltage source. I want to sweep the value of that DC source from, say, half a volt to a volt, and then see what happens to the voltage V out. 
So I'll go back to my simulation. I'm going to edit my simulation command. And now I'm going to go to DC sweep. So here you can have multiple sources that you sweep, but in this case, I'm just going to sweep the V1. That's the only source in my circuit. I'm going to say this is a linear sweep. You can do an octave or a decade sweep. Those are types of log sweeps, but I'll do a linear sweep here. I'll start with a value of 0.5, stop at 5, and get an increment of 0 0.1. Click OK, and notice now the new label I need to put in my schematic. Now notice how the OP now has a semicolon. That means it's basically been commented out. This is now the simulation that's going to run. And so in this case, I now go, and I run my simulation, and my plot window pops up, which means the simulation was successful. Notice on the bottom, I go from 0.5 to 5 volts. So the value I swept that voltage source through becomes my x-axis value. And now I'm going to go and I'm going to go to my schematic. And notice the little probe icon that appears. I click that. And there is my output voltage, V out. And so what this says is as I sweep my input voltage, from 0.5 to 5 volts, the voltage of the diode goes from about 440 millivolts all the way up to about 640 millivolts. Now you notice if you want to, you can zoom in, draw a little box, and zoom in on any particular portion of this window. Zoom in as much as you want to, to really see the exact value if you want. And then go back up and click the zoom full extent icon, and we go back to the original. You also notice that if you want, you can click on V out, and you've got a cursor, and you can take this cursor and move it along the line, and then in this box down here in the lower right-hand corner, you can actually read the value. So at V out, when, the, when V1 was 2.3 volts, V out was 608.93 millivolts, and then you just go through and look at the data points. So very handy, very useful little tricks you can do. All right, now one thing also, you don't have to stick with these colors. Quite often people find the uh, default colors kind of hard to look at or hard to read. So let me show you something you can do that will make things easier for you. Let's go up to Tools, and let's click on Control Panel first. And I'm going to go to my Waveforms. My Data Trace Width and Cursor Width are set at 1. Personally, I like to bump those up to 2 and keep them there, which makes my lines a little bit thicker, easier to see on my plots. The other thing I like to do is go back to the tool menu and then click color preferences. I don't really like black as a background. I much prefer to go down to my background and then push red, green, and blue all the way up to 255 and give myself a white background. That is, to me, a lot more readable, personally. And also, if you have to copy and paste this into a document, it also looks much better in the document. So I like to use these particular types of color preferences. And at any time, you can go back and you can reset the defaults. So if you want to, you can go back to the tool menu and bring up the color preferences. And if you want to, you can hit defaults and go back to the way it was before if you don't like what you had. So. I've completed my DC simulation. Notice in this case, these were the voltages. I can also go down to my schematic and I can notice a little interesting icon here. There's a little probe for voltage. This little loop means current. Look on the other side of the plot. Here is a plot of current. That is ID1. So I can actually plot both the voltage and the current since they're different types of units, they're plotted on different sides of the plot with different axes.
I can also, of course, go up here and right click on either one of these and say delete the trace and get rid of it and go back to the other trace. Or I can go back up to this and I can change the color. Let's say I don't like the green. Let's go to the blue. So at this point, if I wanted to, I could copy and paste this into a document. It would look very nice. All right, so that completes our DC sweep simulation. Now let's look at AC simulations. So I'm going to go ahead and close this. I'm going to expand my schematic again. So in this case, I want to do an AC simulation. And when I say AC simulation, this is like a small signal simulation, for example, you would see in Electronics 1, where we're going to have a DC bias point, and then we're going to run an AC simulation small signal. So in order to do this, I'm going to have to make my voltage source both an AC and a DC source, give it attributes of both. So let's go back and let's click my source, go to advanced after I right click it. And notice here, I've got a lot of different options. My DC value, let's keep it at five. We're gonna put our bias point where we have that five volt source to set our bias point for our circuit. Now for our small signal AC analysis, we can pick any amplitude we want. I'm going to leave phase blank. That's not, that's not going to be important in what the simulation I'm going to do. But I can do AC amplitude. And I'm going to pick a value of 1. Now you can make that AC amplitude anything you want because the AC simulation is a linear model. It can be any value. I prefer 1 just because any voltage that gets referenced back to 1, I can, for example, V out over VN. If VN is 1, then V out is just the ratio of V out over VN, right? So it's easier to just use an AC amplitude of 1 almost all the time. So I click that, and now notice AC 1. So I've got 5 volts DC and a 1 volt AC source attribute. Now let's go, and we're going to go to our simulation command again. And now we're going to go to AC analysis. And this is left over from my DC, so I'll go ahead and delete these. What type of sweep do I want? Well, generally, we want this thing, in general, to look like a Bode plot from circuits two. So we want to pick a decade sweep. And maybe 50 points per decade or 100 points, that's usually a good value. We want to start at some low but non-zero. You can't put a zero in here, so I'm going to put 0 0.1 hertz. And my stop frequency will be, say, 100 E6, 100 megahertz. And once again, I'm going to place that command. So now notice how the DC and the OP commands have now been commented out. Now the AC command is going to run. Once again, I click my run. And I have my plot. Notice it goes from 100 millihertz up to 100 megahertz. Now let's click the output node. And we have both the magnitude on this side and the phase of the output voltage in the AC. Now I can get rid of, for example, the phase plot. I don't really care about that right now. But in circuits two, of course, it's very useful to have the phase of a voltage or a current. But in this case, I'm just going to not say don't plot phase. Notice my voltage is in dB decibels by, by default. But if I right click on that, I can change that to logarithmic. So I get a log scale on the y-axis. Or I can go to linear. So we can see here the value of V out, assuming a one volt AC source, that is the output voltage. It's about 11 millivolts at low frequencies. And so the if I asked you what the ratio of V out to Vn is, you'd say, oh, it's going to be you know, 11 times 10 to the minus 3. So that's the advantage of having the Vn is just one volt AC, because the output voltage is automatically the ratio. But of course, from a circuits to or Bode plot point of view, you're typically going to keep this in decibels.
So here is your AC simulation. And this is, once again, I can go through, change the colors if I want to make the thing clearer. And just as I saw before, I can click on any part of this plot and zoom into it if I want to. So the AC simulation, once again, is very much, in fact, it's exactly like the type of small signal simulation you're going to see. And keep in mind, this AC simulation was done assuming a DC bias of 5 volts. So if your circuit isn't working the way you think it is, check to make sure you're biasing it up correctly, that you actually your DC operating conditions are where you think they need to be. All right, so next we're going to look at our transient simulations. Oh, oh pardon me, one thing I do want to mention here. We notice how this output voltage rolled off at high frequencies. Now, why did it change up here? Well, there's no capacitor in the circuit you can see, but there is a capacitor. There is a capacitance associated with that 1 in 4148 diode model, that commercial diode model. So there's an intrinsic capacitance. That intrinsic capacitance is what is causing this roll off at high frequencies. So in case you're wondering what's happening, you're seeing this frequency dependence because clearly there is a frequency dependent element in that diode. And in fact, any type of circuit that's going to have an intrinsic capacitance or an actual capacitor in, in the schematic is going to show some type of frequency dependence that you're going to see in an AC simulation. Okay, now let's look at our, finally, our transient simulation. So I'll once again get rid of the plot. I'll expand my schematic. Now once again, a transient simulation requires we change our source. Once again, I'm going to go right-click over to the source. For transient simulation, we have to pick a time-dependent function. So in this case, I'm going to pick a sine wave for no particular reason, just that I want to, to run a sine wave simulation and see what it looks like. So in this case, the voltage of the DC, volt, the voltage source, the voltage of that source is going to change as a function of time. So I'm just going to pick some values. Uh, I'm going to say my DC offset is 0. And my amplitude is 5 volts. And my frequency is 1,000 hertz. The delay, uh, the theta, the phi, the end cycles, I can just leave blank for now. So I'll click OK on that. So now notice I've got commands that for my sine wave that are now associated with that source. Now I need to once again go up to my simulation command. Now I'm going to click on transient. So what I need for the transient is I need a stop time. I'm going to, how long do I want this simulation to run? Well, I've got a, I've got a thousand, uh, I got a, a one kilohertz signal, a one kilohertz sine wave. So let's say I'm going to run this out to 10 milliseconds. That's about 10 cycles. And the time to start saving data and maximum time step, you can leave those blank. And for now, we're not going to worry about, you know, starting it, you, any of these other menu options. So I'll click OK. And now look, dot tran 10 to e to the minus 3. So now all my other simulation commands have disappeared. Now this one or have been commented out. Now this is going to be the one we're going to run. Okay, I've run my simulation. Now let's just first go through and look at VN. So VN is exactly what we would expect to be. It's a sine wave swinging between plus and minus 5 volts. And I'm going through one cycle, okay, every millisecond. So it's a 1 kilohertz wave. Now let's look at our output. And we notice here the circuit is clipping because, of course, the diode turns on when we have a positive voltage and the circuit acts like a limiter. And once again, if we want to, we can zoom in and look at any part of this and look at the values, zoom back out again, or we can click on the cursors and we can move through and we can watch the value of the voltage as we click through and see what the exact value was at any particular point in time. All right. So 
This completes our very quick lesson on how to do DC, AC, and transient simulations. There's obviously a lot more to LT Spice than what I'm showing here. In fact, it's, this is a very powerful piece of software. But in terms of what the kind of work you're going to be do, do you're going to be doing in your class, as long as you understand these basic types of simulations, this will get you past most of the work you need to do. So you need to just practice, you need to read the documentation, and just get comfortable using the software. And you'll find very quickly that it's an incredibly useful piece of software if you're going to design circuits. In fact, circuits like uh, circuit simulators like this are absolutely essential. So good luck in the use of LT Spice, and uh, please let me know if you have any questions.